This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is your obedient servant. Reverend George Latimer Knight coming to you this morning with this week's Sunday School lesson. <clears throat> I don't want to prolong the time. Let us go right on to the lesson for this week. We are in lesson number 18, May 3rd, 2020. International subject, prophesying restoration. UHSC subject, you can be made whole if you believe. Lesson text, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Prophesying restoration. As I was studying this lesson in preparation for this video, I, I could see a message for us today. Of course, when I originally worked on this for the Sunday School book, the global pandemic was not happening at that time, so I didn't see it, but I can see it this morning. Prophesying restoration. God is going to restore this nation. God is going to restore the world. Amen. Some people have very dire uh, predictions. They are prophesying that we will not recover or it will be very uh lengthy process, difficult. It would only be difficult if we make it difficult. We as a human race have the tools, the ability to do whatever we put our minds to. We can put people on the moon. We can make weapons to destroy each other. Surely we can come together and put all our collective minds together to come up with the uh, treatments and vaccines and protocols that are necessary for us to move forward with our lives until we're able to get past this current crisis. Prophesying restoration. We have to speak life into this situation. Not to say that what's being said is not true to a point. Yes, if we sit here collectively and just keep going along as if nothing is happening and do nothing about it and don't make plans and don't you know, live in the reality of what's going on right now and make contingency plans and mitigation plans and reopening plans, yes, things will not get better. But they can get better if we put our minds in the right place. And this is what Zephaniah was doing in his day. Uh, the nation of Israel was in a dire strait, but he was trying to put them in the right frame of reference that the crisis will not last always and God will restore us. Again, the UHSC subject, you can be made whole if you believe. Again, it applied then and applies today. You can be made whole. You can. I can. You can. We can be made whole. Can meaning possible. It is possible for the nation to be made whole. It is possible for the world to be made whole, but we have to believe it. And if we believe it, then we will start to make plans and take actions that go toward what we say we believe. Uh, I wanna read the first paragraph for the explanatory synopsis next. The prophet Zephaniah is foretelling of the restoration of Israel. Zephaniah prophesied to the southern kingdom of Israel, known as Judah. His warnings were listened to because the northern kingdom, still known as Israel, had already been captured. In verses 14 and 15, 
God is promising Judah that they will one day be free from the hands of their enemies. We will be free. We will be freed from this global pandemic. That is the enemy, so to speak, that we are dealing with. And all the things that go along with it, the financial uh, issues, the uh, mental health issues, the uh, educational issues, all the things that are going along with this global pandemic, those enemies, as it were, we will overcome all of our enemies. Yes, even the those who are in leadership who are not doing such a good job on the global level, the national level, the state, county, and local levels. We have those who are well and those who are, are showing their true lack of leadership. We will overcome all these enemies if we believe. The first outline is celebration, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, which was just referenced. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Amen. I love that verse uh, 15. And the Lord had taken away thy judgments. If you recall what we studied, I mean, I don't want to make the wrong reference here. Yes, on last Sunday, we dealt with Isaiah chapter 61 and 62, a justice loving God. So, but here, God through Zephaniah is saying, God will, again, Take away thy judgments. In other words, you did wrong. You messed up. And you reap what you sowed. You were judged. And you are suffering because of things you have done. But I will take away thy judgments. I will commute the sentence. Do you understand? I will, I will pardon you. I will let you out early. I'll end your sentence early. I'll take away thy judgments and restore you to where you were. So you'll cast out the enemies. So all, again, all the enemies I mentioned, the global pandemic, the financial crisis, all the, the health care crisis, uh, the educational crisis, the mental health crisis, all the stuff that people are dealing with, all those enemies will be cast out. The king of Israel. Now, when he said the king of Israel, Zephaniah was, God through Zephaniah was not referring to the king, whoever was sitting on the throne at that time. He was referring to the Lord God Almighty. Because if you recall, those of the biblical scholars are with us. God never intended for them, for Israel to have royalty. But the people demanded to have a king. That's why they got their first king, King Saul. And then the second king was King David because God had to cut off the family of Saul because of his disobedience. The people wanted a king like all the other, other nations, but God wanted them to see that he himself, the great sovereign of the universe, was their king. So he's saying here, I the Lord, the king, I am the king of Israel. It doesn't matter who's sitting on the throne, I am the king of Israel. I am, I am God is the king of Israel. So we will apply to ourselves. I am God is the president of the United States. It doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who's the governor of your state, the mayor of your city. Now it matters if they are handling things well. You'll be having an easier time. But regardless of who's sitting in any particular seat of authority, God is the mayor. God is the governor. God is the president, so to speak. God is on the throne. God is the king. God is the sovereign of the universe. And if we look to God, we look to his word, we look to him within ourselves, everything will fall into place regardless of who was sitting in the seat of authority, naturally speaking. We go on to the second outline, promise, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 16 to 20. 
16 and 17. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So in that day, when you are restored, in the day you are restored, the, the Lord God will be in your midst. He's going to be with you. Why? Because God was with them when they were in their crisis, <clears throat> when they were in captivity, when they were in the hands of the enemies. Even then, God was with them. A lot of them could not see it. Many of us can't see God in the midst of what we're dealing with now, all the death and destruction and the economic uh, collapse. People can't see God, but God is still in our midst. God, why? How, how is God in the midst? How can God not be in the midst? For we are God within. And if we are God within, it doesn't matter what's happening, exter happening externally. We are still God within. God is with us. God is still a sovereign of the universe. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter who says what or who's doing what. God is in charge. Now, God has given us free will, and if we want to act a fool and mess our lives up, God will allow us to do so. But when we get ourselves together, we can be restored. And when we are restored, there'll be joy. There'll be singing. There'll be praising because we have overcome. Verse 18, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. So I'll gather you together. You were sorrowful prior, but I'll gather you together. I'll give you some joy and I will uplift you those who were of reproach those who were burdened down i will relieve your burden amen verse 19 behold at that time i will undo all that afflict thee and i will save her that haileth halteth excuse me and gather her that was driven out and i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame he said, i'm going to turn it around I'm going to turn this thing completely on his head. I will undo all that afflict thee. That's my message to us. As God is speaking to us this morning. God is going to undo all that afflicts us right now. He's going to undo whatever, whatever effect this pandemic is having on you. Whatever effect it's having. God, whoo, thank you. God is going to undo it. Whatever negative effect is happening on you, whatever it is, God is going to undo that affliction and restore you back to where you were prior. And then if you will continue to be obedient and listen to the spirit, you will you can possibly come out of this better than where, where you were when you when this thing started. So he'll give you praise and fame in every land you were put to shame. In other words, all the places where you were put to shame, in the land of finances, in the land of mental health, in the land of job opportunity, any place that you were put to shame, God will restore you and give you praise and fame. Again, a complete turnaround. Verse 20, at that time I will... Bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Now the message he was giving to the, to the southern kingdom, to Judah, was when I restore you, I'm going to restore you to the point where people all over the world are going to stand up and take notice and say, God, those people were in such a bad shape. But look at them now. Woo! Look at them today. Their God sure did it for them. Maybe I ought to come and find out about their God. Amen. Saints of God, God is going to turn us around. 
God through Father Hurley promised us peace, joy, and happiness. And God through Father Hurley is going to turn this around. He told us the speak is to create. He told us the thought of a thing is the prophecy of its fulfillment. Some days might get difficult for you. I don't know what can I don't know what you're going through. Some days might get heavy on you, especially while this pandemic is upon us. But I want you to be at rest assured. I am I, George Hubert Latimer Knight, am prophesying restoration to you, just as uh, Zephaniah prophesied restoration to the people of Judah. I am sitting here coming before you through this great uh, technological medium, and I am saying to you, be restored this morning. Be restored. Receive the restoration of the Lord. Our general theme, I'm closing. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 3. It's from a different time frame, but another wonderful uh, prophecy. This from the great prophet uh, Jeremiah. Along the same lines. So I will gather you wherever you scatter. Materially, wherever your thoughts, your, for some of us, our thoughts may be scattered because there's so many things going on, so many things weighing on us, so many things pulling us from every direction. But you will be restored. God will gather you back from wherever you have been scattered, wherever your thoughts have been scattered. God will have, help you and gather all the righteous thoughts back together and bring you back where you need to be. Zephaniah went on to bring further comfort and instruction to Judah. There was now no reason for them to fear their current circumstances because they could rest assured that restoration was coming. However, once they were restored, God warned them to walk in obedience. Disobedience is what led to their sad state in the first place. God is full of forgiveness and compassion. But if we continually walk in disobedience, we will suffer the consequences of our actions. And when God restores us, we must take advantage of our second chance by walking in obedience. Amen. God is, is forgiving and full of compassion. So whatever you're going through, and I'm talking to myself, things that I am going through. God is forgiving and full of compassion. But remember, if you're disobedient and you keep and continue to stay in disobedience, don't be surprised when you suffer. Don't be surprised. But if you humble yourself, God will restore us. God will restore us. And when you get that second chance or that hundredth chance, that thousandth chance, when you get that chance again to do better, to be better, take advantage. Take advantage of it and soar higher than you ever saw it before. I'm just so happy and I'm so filled with the spirit this morning and I know everything's going to fall into place for us all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'm sure you are praying for me. Until we meet again.